We are living through a tech shift that many people will only understand later. In 2007, most phones had buttons. Nokia felt unbeatable. BlackBerry was the serious phone for work. Then Apple changed the whole idea of what a phone could be. Today, something similar is happening again, but the target is not one phone brand. The target is the smartphone idea itself. The big change is not a faster screen or a better camera. The big change is artificial intelligence and the way we interact with machines. And one company is pushing this idea harder than almost anyone, OpenAI. For years, OpenAI was known for software, especially ChatGPT. Now OpenAI is openly moving towards something bigger, a new kind of personal device built around AI, not built around apps. Think about how a smartphone works. You unlock it, you tap an app, you search menus, you jump between screens, you deal with notifications. The phone does not really understand what you want. It waits for you to tell it what to do, step by step. That made sense in the old world when computers were not smart. Back then, humans had to do all the thinking, and the phone was just a tool. But AI changes the rules. If a device can understand your request in normal language, and if it can remember your preferences, then the screen is not the center anymore. The screen becomes just one option. This is why people keep talking about calm computing, a style of tech that helps you without constantly pulling your attention. Sam Altman has described OpenAI's upcoming device vision as more peaceful and calm than the iPhone, with less distraction as a goal. Here is what we know from credible reporting and OpenAI's own statements. OpenAI announced it would acquire Johnny Ive's hardware startup, IO Products, in a deal valued around $6.5 billion, and Ive is expected to take a major creative role in OpenAI's hardware efforts. OpenAI also published a message about Sam and Johnny's collaboration, saying they had been working together quietly for about two years, exploring new designs beyond traditional interfaces. In recent public discussions, Altman and Ive have said they now have a prototype, but they are still not sharing full details. What has been repeated across multiple reports is the direction. The device is expected to be pocket-sized, focused on AI, and designed to reduce the screen-first lifestyle. Some reports say it is screen-free, or at least not built around a display like a phone, and that it is not eyewear. So the big idea is not another phone. The idea is a personal AI companion device that fits into your life in a calmer way. If you like tech stories explained in simple words and you want to stay ahead of the next big shift, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it tells YouTube to show you more videos like this. Let us picture what OpenAI might be trying to achieve without pretending we know the final product. The goal sounds like this, AI that stays in context with you. Not just a chatbot you open, but a helper that knows what you are doing and helps at the right moment. Not 20 notifications, not five apps open. Just help when help is needed. For example, imagine you are leaving for a meeting. You say one sentence, I am running late, message them and tell me the fastest route. The device handles it. Or you are cooking, hands messy, you ask for the next step and it answers clearly. Or you are in a store and ask, is this a good deal compared to last month? And it responds in seconds. Phones can do parts of this today, but it often feels like work. You open apps, you copy text, you switch screens, you lose focus. A device built around AI could aim to remove that friction. That is why this conversation is so serious. If OpenAI creates a device that makes AI feel natural and constant, it could change behavior. And when behavior changes, the market changes. Apple's greatest power is not just hardware, it is the ecosystem. The iPhone became an extension of daily life because it is the main door to everything. Messages, camera, maps, payments, social apps, work apps. But here's the risk. The iPhone model is screen first. You look down, you tap, you scroll. The new AI model is different. It is voice first, context first, goal first. You ask for outcomes, not for apps. You want results, not menus. If the main door to your digital life becomes an AI companion, then the phone becomes more like a secondary screen, something you use sometimes not all the time. 
That is the shift people mean when they say, the center moves from screen to intelligence. To be fair, Apple is not asleep. Apple has been pushing Apple intelligence and planning improvements to Siri. But even analysts and reports have pointed out delays and pressure around Siri's advanced AI upgrades. Some market commentary suggests 2026 will be a key year for Apple's Siri comeback. And some notes even mention deeper partnerships, like using outside models. But those are still predictions and not guaranteed outcomes. The bigger issue is structural. Apple makes huge money from iPhone sales. Any move that reduces phone importance can threaten that engine. So Apple has a harder job. It has to protect today's business while building tomorrow's interface. OpenAI does not have that same hardware legacy. OpenAI can bet on a new device category without worrying about iPhone revenue. That difference matters a lot. Now let us be honest, building consumer hardware is brutal. We have already seen AI hardware attempts that got big hype and then struggled in the real world. Even Reuters mentioned how some AI device startups have faced performance and technical problems, and the market is not forgiving. If OpenAI wants to win, it has to do more than look cool. The device has to be fast, accurate, reliable, safe, and useful in daily life. It also has to handle privacy in a way people trust. A device that is always around you, listening for commands, needs clear rules, strong security, and transparency. Otherwise, people will reject it. And there are real-world business risks too. For example, there has been a trademark dispute reported around the I.O. name and a judge ordered OpenAI and partners to pause marketing under that disputed branding while things play out. That kind of friction can slow momentum, even if the product idea is strong. No one can promise exact timelines, but we can talk about a reasonable path. In the early years, these AI devices might work alongside phones, not replace them. You still keep your smartphone for camera, social apps, and big screen tasks but you start using the AI device for planning, reminders, quick answers, and daily coordination. Then, if the experience becomes truly smooth, the habit forms. You stop reaching for your phone first. You talk to your AI first. That is when the center of gravity shifts. And when that happens, people stop asking, what phone do you have? And start asking, what AI do you use? Because changing a phone is easy but changing an AI that knows your routine, your work style, your favorite way to learn, your calendar patterns, and your personal preferences, that is harder. It feels like moving to a new brain partner. That is why this race is so intense. The first company to win trust at a deep level can build a powerful advantage. So what is this story really about? It is not about one gadget. It is about a new idea of computing where the interface is not icons and apps. The interface is intelligence. OpenAI is betting that the future device is something calmer, more present in daily life, and less screen obsessed. Recent reporting says Altman and Ive have a prototype and are aiming for a device that feels simple and natural, possibly launching within the next couple of years. Apple is betting it can upgrade the phone era with better AI inside the existing system and many analysts think 2026 could be important for that push, even if the path is complicated. One approach is AI inside the phone. The other is a device built around AI. That difference is the whole battle. If you want, comment below, would you use a screenless AI companion if it truly made life simpler? Or do you think the smartphone will stay king for a long time? And if this video helped you understand what is really happening, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. More simple, documentary-style tech stories are coming, and I will keep them easy to follow with real context and no confusing jargon.